Hi, I'm Roxy. Uh, if you've watched any of my previous tutorials, you may have heard me bitching about certain issues in Corel Painter. Well, Corel heard me too, <laughs> and they reached out to me with some workarounds. So today we're going to discuss the following issues. Number one, the issue of not being able to save a specific texture on a specific brush. Number two, greasy looking color artifacts when painting on separate layers and number three brush resize lag and I'll of course timestamp the video in the description in case you want to jump straight to a specific issue. So issue number one in my previous tutorial about paper textures I explained that there's two ways to get a texture on a brush you can either uh, set the brush to a grainy brush or uh, you can apply a, a dab stencil but regardless of which method you use uh, every time you close and reopen painter your brush has got the default paper texture loaded on it instead of the specific one you chose for that brush when you saved it so just to illustrate my point so you know exactly what I'm talking about um, let's make this super obvious and we'll choose a, a pinstripe texture and uh, set it to 150% of its size 45 degree angle okay so if we save this brush let's call it test close so I've closed and reopened Corel Painter and sometimes you'll get lucky and it will remember the texture but most of the time it's going to be resetting it to the the default paper texture here so obviously that's a bit of a bummer but uh, Corel have told me that there's kind of a workaround for it using something called brush looks um, it's not the perfect solution but it is better than nothing and certainly with discussing so let me show you how it works you go up here to window media panels and looks okay when you first open it you're gonna see a whole bunch of default brush looks not gonna lie they're all hideous um, what I do is I hide them this is a, a different library that I created earlier um, all I did was I clicked new look library I gave it a name and it created this look and, and these are individual looks within the look library that I've created so uh, if I click on this one uh, it switches over to a brush that I created with a specific texture you can see it's not using the uh, the default paper texture it's using uh, one that I created down here same with uh, this one you'll see when I clicked on that it uh, it opened a different brush with a specific texture that I created so I'm going to show you how to create one of these now First of all, uh, let's go to our test brush from earlier. You see it's, uh, it's using the, the, the texture that was used over there because it's the last used texture. But uh, we wanted pinstripe and it's still at 45 degrees and 150 angle. Okay, so this is what we wanted. Now uh, you make a mark on the page you draw a selection around it you go back to the paintbrush and then you come up here to the hamburger menu and click save look and then you give it a name I'm going to call it test and here it is over here now a lot of the time when you you do this you'll find that there's like a little bit of a bug it doesn't update the icon properly it ju it'll just give you a white block and if that happens to you you click on it um, if you right click here and say capture icon it'll capture whatever you have selected so you can update the icon uh, accordingly so now that we have this uh, this brush look we could be on some other texture for example but as soon as we click on the brush look that we created we get back to the texture that we chose at the angle that we chose and at the size that we chose 
So that is a solution to the issue I had. Um, ideally, this should have been built into the brush variant itself. This look library functionality just creates an extra step that we have to do and an extra panel that we have to have open on the screen at all time. So um, it's not the most elegant solution, I'll admit. Um, but at least there is a way. And uh, another thing that you can do is you can hold down shift, drag, drag this, let go, and it creates a custom panel. So you can, sorry, shift, drag, shift, drag, you can uh, you can drag these on there and you can close the look library if it's a bit bulky so that's that's one other thing that you can do now before i move on to the next issue i just want to talk about um, corel painter 2022 which uh, at the time of recording is the the latest edition and i'm sure that you're wondering if it is still this way in 2022 and i can confirm it is you still have to use the look library unfortunately and uh, with that in mind, I'm sure a lot of you will be moving over to 2022 uh, and you want to figure out how to move your look library over there. It's not just a matter of exporting the look library and re-importing it uh, into the latest painter. Um, you could just go over here and export look library. Choose the library. Um, but the problem is it's not going to work and I'll tell you why if we uh, if we click on one of these and click edit look it opens up uh, a text file and you can see it's using uh, the test brush in the Roxy essential brushes brush category in the painter 21 brush library and uh, it's using the pinstripe texture in the Roxy Paper Library. So because it's linked to a specific brush and a specific texture, you have to have um, the look library, the brush, and the texture um, in the new environment uh, for the, the look to be able to work. So it's, it's not a big issue. Let me just show you how to do that. To export your paper textures, you head on over to the paper panel, which is, if you don't have it open, it's Window Media Panels Papers. Uh, come over here to the corner to the book icon, Manage Libraries, and Export Paper Library, and then you choose the correct paper library and click OK, save it somewhere. Uh, for your brushes, um, you come up here to Brushes and Export. And you'll see you can export a brush, a category, or a brush library. If you export the whole library, it will include all the default brushes. So I didn't go that route. I just exported uh, each category that I wanted. So here I am in Painter 2022. And uh, what you'd need to do is head on over to the paper panel. Import your paper library that you exported. Head on over to brushes and uh, import the brush categories that you exported. Head on over to the look library and uh, import the look library that you exported. Now, if you click on um, each one of these and click edit look, leave this dialog open because you need it. Just maximize the, um, the text file that it opens and uh, when when you do it, you'll see that it's going to be pointing to Painter 21 brushes or whatever version you are using. And uh, that's going to be a problem because you likely imported your brush categories into Painter 2022 brushes. So uh, what you need to do is change it right here to 22. Save the file and then click OK to update it. Then it will be pointing to the correct brush library. So yes, just a, a little thing that you're going to have to go through each one and make sure that it's pointing to the correct brush library. Otherwise, uh, the looks won't work, unfortunately. So uh, back in Painter 2021, 
Uh, let's have a look at issue number two, which is greasy looking color artifacts when painting on separate layers. To demonstrate the issue, I've got a brush here that uses soft cover. I'll first show you how it's supposed to look by painting directly onto the canvas. This is what I'm expecting to see. However, if I create a new layer with transparent pixels and then paint on that layer, suddenly you see how it's looking a little bit greasy in areas. Um, and it looks even worse if I set it to grainy soft cover. See how it's you're getting reds and yellows coming in instead of, uh, you know, just orange. Um, but if you only paint on one layer, this is, this is a non-issue because it only happens on layers that have transparent pixels. See, if I, if I go back to the canvas layer, um, I don't have any such issue. The thing is, most of us paint on layers, so it's a, it's a pretty major problem and fortunately one that Corel knows about. So they've advised to use Grainy Alpha Blend instead. So let's check it out. I'm going to set this here, Grainy Alpha Blend, and we're going to go back to our layer. Not too bad. It certainly doesn't look like that. Looks pretty good. And on the canvas, also pretty much behaves as expected. So that's a pretty decent fix. Um, if you were using soft cover um, and you worried about setting it to grainy alpha blend because obviously grain, grainy means there's texture being applied. Um, so just make sure that your grain is set to zero and uh, you shouldn't have any unwanted texture coming through. Now, I've also had the opposite true where a brush was set to grainy alpha blend and it looked trash. And then when I set it to cover, it rectified itself. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to replicate that for this video. I guess it must have been in a very specific environment that the bug popped up. But um, if that happens to you, just try toggling to cover method and see if that fixes it. Before we head over to Painter 2022, I just want to mention one unrelated yet similar issue. Um, when I first started using Painter, which was uh, version 2019, I noticed that when painting uh, on layers, a lot of my brush strokes had this unsightly white fringe around them. Um, I haven't been able to replicate the issue in 2021, so presumably they fixed it at some point. But if you happen to stumble across this bug, just head over to the blending panel and tick Enhanced Layer Blending. Assuming you don't actually want to make a blending brush, just make sure that your resaturation uh, amount is set to 100, your bleed is set to zero, and the expressions are set to none. Then it's not a blending brush. Um, but just ticking this solves my issue. In fact, you can see as I'm hovering over, it shows that ugly white fringe and how it fixes it. So now when I make brushes, it doesn't matter whether it's a blending brush or not, I always tick this. Now I've just opened Corel Painter 2022. We're just going to check if the problem persists here. I've got the same brush, that paint roller brush, and it's on a grainy soft cover. Yep, as you can see, it's looking really streaky and gross. If I set it to canvas, suddenly it behaves as it should. So the problem persists in 2022. The only difference is that they've changed cover to, they've renamed it to legacy cover. And I did try enhanced cover. which seems like it's fixed the issue. So it seems like this might not be an issue in 2022, 
as long as you make sure to change it from legacy cover, which was what this brush was on when I imported it. So it switches from cover to legacy cover and you just change it over to enhanced cover. And I suppose it doesn't hurt to, uh, to toggle between a few and just see what works best. So issue number three is brush resize lag when using the bracket keys. Now you'll see here from my brush accelerator results, it thinks that my PC is awesome, which it pretty much is, um, except for the CPU, it's a bit on the older side, and my CPU doesn't have the AVX2 extension. Even so, um, a Corel Painter seems to think that my brush performance will be exceptional. However, if I decide I want to change the size of my brush using the bracket keys, so to illustrate, I'm going to hold down the bracket key and I'll let you know once I've taken my finger off the bracket key. All right, I've taken my finger off the bracket key. And as you can see, it's still going. It's thinking about each little size uh, increase iteration. Visibly aging, it's taking so long. Still going. While this is going, um, I'll tell you about the solution. And it's done. So what I've noticed is that if you hold down your bracket key to make it either bigger or smaller, and you just sit through um, all of the little clock icons popping up until it's finished, before you start painting, then it seems to go a lot better during the paint. So I think what's happening is it only has to calculate the brush size once and once it's calculated you can paint as normal. To illustrate if I click reset now it's back uh, at 200 size and if I hold down the bracket key okay I've taken my finger off the key you can see it's behaving a little better. Um, there was still a little bit of lag but not quite so much. So that is I wouldn't say a solution but uh, it's something to consider to minimize the pain. Something that um, Corel told me is that if you hold down Control and Alt, um, you get a resize tool. See that? And as you can see, there's zero lag. So that is um, a solution. Um, obviously, the first prize would have gone to um, actually making the, the brackets workable because I have the bracket keys hot keyed to my tablet um, but at least this is a solution. Now we're going to head over to Corel Painter 2022. So here we are I'm going to hold down the bracket key and yeah same story so the problem persists in Painter 2022 but what it does have is this awesome size library if you use Clip Studio Paint, this will look familiar. And I have to say it's pretty damn awesome. I'm really happy that they added this. And uh, I'm glad that they're clearly looking at other painting programs to see what good features they can absorb. It means that Painter can only get better. So um, obviously this is just a, a really quick way to change your brush size. And handy that it's definite sizes. I mean, if I click this, I know that it's always at, at 5. If I click this, it's always going to be a 10. Um, I'm guessing there's probably, yes, add size preset. Oh, I see. Okay, so if I set it to 12, for example, let's say 12 is the sweet spot. And then I click add. There we go. Now it's got uh, 12. So you can set your own custom sizes as well. So this is absolutely amazing. Thank you, Corel. So those are our three issues. Um, before I end off, I've got one more thing. Um, if you watched my creation tutorials and you've since upgraded to Paint 2022, you may be missing my layout file, which arranges the panels like so. I know I was, so um, I recreated them in uh, Corel Painter 2022. The only difference is it has uh, these three. Um, the uh, the look library that we discussed earlier, the size library, and it's also got this really cool um, functionality. This is new to Corel Paint 2022. Basically, let me just zoom in so you can see. We're at 100%, okay. 
So uh, let's say uh, we're on, we're using this brush as a square as it was designed, but we decide we want more of a roundish dab. You can just find, like here's an oval looking one. I click that, it changes the brush dab to this shape and it's just temporary. If I click reset, okay, it's not temporary. <laughs> It seems like it permanently changes the dab because uh, if we if we click reset, um, it's still got this oval shape. So um, I can only assume that that's a bug, and I hope that they will uh, release a patch for that. But the point is, uh, it's supposed to allow you to change your your brush on the fly, the brush shape, and. Uh, I guess you should be able to change it back to how it was, which uh, would be pretty awesome if that was the case. So liking the feature, just want them to fix it. Anyway, so the point was um, I recreated the layout as I did in my previous tutorial and uh, I've saved that layout file and uh, you can find the link to it in the description. If you don't have any version of Painter and you're looking to buy, feel free to use my affiliate code also in the description. It will give you $100 off a full purchase of Corel Painter. And uh, I guess that's it. Thank you for watching. Much obliged if you leave a like and subscribe. Until the next one, God bless.